So, Don, what uh, what games have you been playing? What you been up to? Man, I've been on that Tomb Raider right now, and then Ooh, man, wait. it's meted all my expectations. <laughs> it's the best out of all three of them. I am, I'm liking the game. It's not a perfect game, but man, I'm having f- fun with it. Uh, they put a lot of work into it, and you know, I like a good story based game every once in a while. Like we get sucked in games like Destiny and GTA. Um, you know, and I, I got sucked into Wildlands for like for a whole entire year until I finished the game finally, right? It's nice to have something with a beginning, middle, and end, and that's what that game offers, which yeah, I my hat's off to them for, for sure. Great game. That's good game. Hey, so um, hey, I I haven't played it yet. So I know you uh um, you to play the first Tomb Raider, the rise of the Tomb Raider, and now since you played this Tomb Raider, do you think this Tomb Raider uh, has better fatalities than the other Tomb Raiders had. You know how lower top corrupts where you'll be f- going through the water and you'd be dodging the trees and all of a sudden you get hit by something and it just jug you through the head and it just come out the back of your skull. And it, I mean, it'd be some more the combat gruesome looking stuff. Man, I don't, I don't die a lot, so I don't know. Uh, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got to raise the difficulty level then. Yeah, no, um, it does have some of that sort of stuff. And, it, you know, it always catches you off guard because you're being impaled by something uh, in regards to that. Pro tip, if you are doing that, they are doing a like a photo contest, you can actually pause it just right before the screen changes color when it you know shows that you're dead. And you can go into photo mode and sometimes you can change the expressions on Laura's faces. So you can actually make her smile like she's happy with a spike through her head <laughs> and, and take a screenshot and stuff like that. But no, it's the same thing. I don't think they evolved that portion of it though. Um, it's it's more of the same as far as that's concerned. So Oh, that that's what's up, and um, flip on um, flip. You've been playing it too, have on uh, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Hey, so, uh, so what do you think about it? Uh, well, you know, on Twitter I gave it a nine point five, and people said, "Well, what, what just a nine point five? I'm like, "Well, I mean, no game is perfect, though." But I'm saying, like, you know, if I'm hearing that this is the end. This is the end of this chapter chapter of her life. I guess they're gonna go to the next one as her older. This is. It's sad that people are hating on this game as good as this game is. Like, I don't care what system that it's on. Like, I don't understand why people's hating on this game. Like, it's on every platform, so what's the problem? Like, this game is good. Like, I play the game. I'm, I'm like, yo, I think I'm almost near the end of this game. I hate to say that, and I, I, it, you could kind of tell, some, sometimes you could kind of tell with certain games that you're near the end. And I think I'm near the end. This game got replay value for me. Because once I beat this game, I'm going to go back and play it again and play it on a harder level. I'm playing it on normal. Don't kill me. But then I'm going to play it on the hardest level. Did you see that you can change the difficulties for different things? So your enemy types can be a different difficulty than the puzzles? Yeah. yeah. You can break it down that way. So what I like to do is I like to turn the puzzle difficulty off. Like I don't, I don't want. I, I mean, not off, but I, I don't even want any aids at all. I want it to be the hardest as possible. So when I'm like traversing an area or solving a puzzle, there's no white marks on on those areas to kind of give you hints of where it's going on. You just kind of have to read the terrain. Um, so you can you can play around with all that sort of stuff, which I thought was kind of cool. You know what? I, I did see that. I did see that. Now, now, now let, let me ask you something else that me and uh, 100 was talking about uh, yesterday, earlier today or yesterday. Anyway, we were saying that it was saying um, it was loading. Like it, it was saying, um, what was the saying? Like certain areas of the game, as the game was going, it, it, it kind of frees up and it was spinning, saying, um, saying screaming or something like that i'm like like is this doing that because it because it really don't have no loading time because i really don't notice the loading unless when you turn the game on yeah they, 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 pre, they preload everything as much as possible uh on, on the game there's areas also where it's saving but it uses it those times when it's loading stuff to save but um yeah they try to make it as seamless as possible but there's there's obviously hard cuts in there where they like whatever you finish an area and next thing you know, you kind of go into another area and then like you see like the little Tomb Raider logo, like the little TR in the little circle yeah, going on that. there. But to try to make it as seamless as possible, I mean, I mean, can't, can't avoid it no matter what. I mean, people have different hard drives connected to their machines and stuff like that. So there's always going to be something that's, you know, have to be loaded uh, down the road. So. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. It's just that I just noticed that. You noticed it. 
Yeah. Really, I just noticed that shit. Like, yo, is is you know, I'm like, oh, all right. Well, it's so seamless. So when it does have to load, you're like, what the hell? Is my yeah. game <laughs> is it frozen? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, what the? And I just realized, like, wait a minute, this game ain't been doing no loading. So yeah. that's what made me ask that. Like, wait a minute. Actually, the, the old Tomb Raider did um did something similar to that too. The Rise of the Tomb Raider. Where it wasn't really loading, it just kind of had the little circle with the R or T R inside of it, and right. you kind of like it'll still go. The only part that was really loading is when you actually got down by the fireplace and saved the game and stuff like that, and, and changed the stuff. I mean, they that, they, they try to hide that stuff as much as possible. That's the general idea, because it obviously, if you can have a more seamless experience, uh, the more you engage that person that's playing your product. So, I mean, that's the, kind of the general idea. But outside of that, I mean, it's a freaking phenomenal game. Yeah, yeah I mean, don't get me wrong. They're doing a good job at it. I'm going to tell you that. They're doing a good job at it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm first level into the game. Man, I'm at right. this point, and I'm not going to spoil it for anything. Like, hey, literally, you must have hit an intro. This is the most spoiler. Spoil it. Spoil it. Ow. They know what they're getting into when they listen to this. No, 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 no. I'm not going to spoil for anyone because I, I love to talk about it after people experience it. And like flip you know this and people that play the game know this the first three seconds grabs you before you even see anything on the screen and i don't want to give anything away but you're like damn why can't all games have that like kind of just put you in in it like that and then there i'm at this part man i'm i'm into some spooky places Man, I, I, I know where you at. You ain't gotta say I know where you at. You know where I'm at, right? So I'm like, hold on, what the hell? I'm like, oh man, this ain't this ain't right. Yeah, it, <laughs> ain't, it, ain't, ain't, it ain't. And I'm like, what am I? What am I fighting? And then you're like, oh, and then you're like, ah, but it still creeps you out, and yeah, and they had a, like this cut scene that creeped me out even more. And I'm just like, oh man, just get me outside, get me out of here. <laughs> Oh, wow. it was, yeah. inside of a tomb like they 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 they, they it's it's part of the story part uh, of it there's tombs like there's there's like these mini tombs everywhere so when you talk the way they have like these hub worlds so like usually they're focused around like a little town or something like that and when you talk to people sometimes you unlock a tomb on the map yeah, uh, and technically you could go to them regardless, but you don't know where they are. They're kind of well hidden in plain sight, sort of things. Um, but what happens is they'll tell you where a tomb is. Now, usually, like a lot of side missions, like talking to everyone, that part's kind of. I'll be honest with you, it's kind of boring and kind of don't care about their day to day life. Um, but when they unlock those tombs, that's satisfying because once you go to one of those tombs, they're usually they're more puzzle based like type things. But when you finish it what you end up with is an, an extra ability to Laura. So you can you can do the game without doing this, the side tombs, but there's real benefits to doing the tombs outside of being fun. You actually get those uh, side abilities. And I think it's just kind of a cool little perk for encouraging people to go find those tombs and then to go and, do them. So. And this is another reason why I have to play this game again. Because it's like we all can in here in this party can play it and get get something a little different out of it. K. Megan, he done. I don't know. He he found more tunes than I have that I didn't even know that he was doing side missions. Like he was talking about something. Some of y'all may out there may know what it is. Something about tune with water and mirrors. I'm like, I never even experienced that. Like, where yeah, did you I, get I, that? I, I haven't experienced that. I experienced the one with like the rotating chainsaw with like uh, obsidian chunks. Of glass, <laughs> that sounds uh, fun. The See, rotates I, 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 and then I things were on fire. I, I didn't even it, experience that at all. See, I didn't yeah, even get to that. It's, the, it's good. <laughs> like I'm like, what? And then once, see, and that one, once you finish it, you unlock this ability. So when you when you draw your bow, you don't have to draw a new arrow each time mm -hmm. you shoot. So when you draw your bow, you'll automatically have one arrow that's already drawn and then three in your in your hand uh the opposing hand that's holding the bow and so you can basically rapid fire the bow bow shots one round right after the other right after they right after the other yeah i don't i didn't i seen that perk and i don't even get, i didn't even get that yeah so and that's why like i as soon as i found out because like the first area i accidentally skipped to do to tomb because i didn't realize i was progressing the story and then went to the new area so i can't go to that old tomb anymore right 
So now I'm in this area. I'm trying to go to as many tombs that are available um, because those perks are well worth it and make the gameplay even better. So, Hey, is it still kind of based like how the other one was where you could choose like different categories of like that way you could craft your lower crop the, the way you want your lower crop to be like if you want her. To yeah, be, they like, have skill trees too. Like, it's, there's still skill trees. So when you earn skill points, you can apply it to perks in this way. But the tombs are different abilities altogether, period. They're only available through tombs. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. They still got the, uh, I, uh, they, I, I used to call them finishing moves. Like when Laura Croft, you'll have somebody, you'll pin them down and you pull a shotgun out and you just- Execution. Yeah, they still, got they still have that stuff. Like it's all, a lot of that's built into the stealth mechanics now. So, mm -hmm. so like as soon as you find one of those like walls where you can tell like it's the roots you can hide in, and there's right. mud up against the wall, you instantly, almost like a reflex now, you look for the mud puddle where you can cover yourself up and look like Predator. Yeah. <laughs> going. It's, 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 it's getting there, yeah. It's, it's yeah. crazy. It, and it's, it's crazy, you know, because usually like, when you do some sort of weird camouflage thing in a game, it's not really camouflaged. Like, you, you look at the item and then they kind of highlight you weird or do something, but you, like know, enemies, you know enemies can't see you. This, you really blended in. Like you're truly blended into the wall. You can make out the character, but like how they got it to match is pretty awesome. Yeah, oh, that did that. That's that's what's up right there. But a million dollar question I need to ask you, Don. What system is you playing it on? Oh, Xbox One X. Oh, you playing it on the X? Mm -hmm. X gonna give it to you. X is gonna give it to you. That, that, I mean, <laughs> I, have a, I, have a, I have my PS4 Pro as as well, but like you know, I just. I really just have that machine to play the exclusives that I would miss out on on, on the X. Like um, the Spider-Man? Like the Spider-Man, uh, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. The God of Wars, those sort of sort of games. So those are typically few and far between. Um, but it's kind of nice when you're playing a campaign game, you just... I don't get interrupted on that that machine like because none of my friends are there. I just go on there, I play, do my business, and then, then I kind of more or less just kind of get off it, so... Right, I mean, Sony is a movie studio, so you go to Sony to get a movie experience. So I, I, I don't subscribe <laughs> to that one. I mean, I think they do really well. They understand the whole story element telling process, so I think their studios know how to pitch that to them, and right. you know that's something that they're looking for because they've seen success, uh, especially with Naughty Dog as a studio. So a lot of their studios are kind of following suit, but. Um, I, I don't necessarily believe that they're the only ones in town that can do that. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I ain't they're just really good at pitching it to those guys, to be honest with you. I said because they're a movie studio, like Sony Pictures, you know, they're known for making movies. So when I go to them, I go to them with a mind state, a state of I would. this is what I'm expecting out of them to give me a movie experience. I ain't say they're the only ones do it. I just say that's, the, that's what I expect out yeah. of them. Yeah, and, and their stuff is good Good stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't pretend like you know the other side doesn't have good products they, they do have good products and it's worth playing um you know sometimes it gets overhyped sometimes i certain things i feel don't get a fair shake uh, as far as that goes but you know it's worth owning their platform at this point where they have enough exclusives built up over the three or four years it's been out to to play their stuff so right i ain't gonna lie I'm talking about um over hype and some kaleidoscope Really sold the shit out of Spider Man PS4. He was the way he um ex explained the game, he got me want to go play that now. So, like, you know, certain people could all uh, hype a game up too to make you want to play it. And it's actually a good, good thing sometimes. And sometimes you could do an overkill where people would be like, uh, like, yeah, like, uh, how, like how they did No Man's Sky. Like, they if they wouldn't have hyped it so much, I think the game would have been acceptable, and then it wouldn't the price wouldn't have been so much. People do that well with anything, right? Like they do themselves right. a disservice. Like if they're in, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about Iron Fist and stuff like that. And if people overhype that and set a false expectation, people are not going to enjoy it. But if they're expecting one thing, and they get something more that or better than what they expected, they're going to probably get more enjoyment out of it. And so. Um, I, I think overhype is is a problem within communities of really anything. It could be movies, it can do, it can be comic books, it could be 
uh, video games. Um, you know, obviously there's a bias that sometimes motivates that sort of stuff. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a, with a bias as long as you, you don't let it completely blind you, if that makes any sense. Um, right. as, as far as that goes. And, you know, I, I looked at Spider-Man and this is just my opinion is it's, um, it's, I looked at it as kind of a, that will do as far as the first party, like exclusive goes, I, I don't think it's the cream of the crop of what they've offered. Uh, as far as you know, Sony goes, but it's definitely one of the better Insomniac games out there. Is the way I would kind of word it. Um, and if you want a good comic book game that's not Batman, because that's really the only decent one out there, um, it, it definitely scratches that itch, and it's definitely a good game. So, right, right, I feel you. Hey, speaking about scratching the itch, man, let 